Welcome to another short video showing my daily update routine with our T2 SDE Linux distribution. So I have a nightly tracker running, checking for changes on the upstream servers. And usually the first thing in the morning that I'm doing wherever I am, either in the office or abroad on some business somewhere, even in hotels and such is going through this email that my nightly update tracker spits out here. And usually I do this every day, but uh, the last days were a little bit busy. And also I intentionally wanted to accumulate some, sometimes there are only three or four. And I was also hacking on the P3 and so one day passed and so on. So in the meantime, it's four days of emails or something. But quickly wanted to show you what afford it is to keep thousands of packages updated and maintained. Everything is already quite simplified here. And actually I'm already considering to writing some script to not even check for the updates on the FTP and HTTP servers, but even automatically apply these changes and test build them and maybe potentially even automatically commit them if they just continue to compile. But right now is still a manual step to cut and paste here this update information. So here are the lower version and higher versions. So this release candidate is something we are not going to test build, so we can delete this. There you see that there right now still is a little bit human interaction required because they have here work in progress and whatsoever. Right now our update version comparison cannot distinguish if this is something useful or not. While automatics would work for many packages um, for this kind of uh, random stray noise. There would be some more artificial intelligence required. You see, actually, I wanted to film this already some days ago, and since then we got some more packages. So the T2 package format is actually super simple. If we take a look at this graphic libro, graphic libro, and each package has a description file. You can think of key value pairs beside copyright. This is information, text, URL, author, maintainer, category, flex, license status, version, some build priority, and some download with checksum. So while we could manually edit this here, remove the checksum to zero, um, edit here seven something. This is actually not what we are doing. We have an update script which is doing this for us. So I only need to cut and paste here the new version. And as you can see, the update script is substituting the new version and zeroing out the checksum test downloads this for us. And even patches in the new checksum. And while there are scripts for individual steps, this is the most comfortable, I think. So I quickly go over these. So you see sometimes this release candidate, then I quickly check if there is another one. So apparently, maybe also this. Copy and paste. Okay, we had this already. So I quickly go through all those updates. Also, this is the data center server. If the downloads are either big or the other server is a little bit slower, I actually have here a screen and use multiple screen sessions to download in parallel for the case that I'm copy and pasting faster than the downloads. Sometimes the package name is slightly different than the download file, like the Perl packages usually have Perl in front. So then I need to do a little bit of typing. But if we further automate this, this would not be a problem for fully automation because the update checker is already working on this file. So the update checker already knows very well that it is this file and this line of downloads it is working on. So this is no problem to fully script. If this download failed, then this is probably slightly different per package that was there. Then this needs a little bit of human caretaking. As the spinutil package provides also assembler linker and such, I will probably not commit this immediately, but rather test build this a few days with some architectures, because this can easily lead to some regressions. Did I really forget the screen capture? <clears throat> Since some years I only update Linux kernel with the first point one release, so we skip this for another day. Actually, it's not the download that takes the longest, it's sometimes a set standard compression that we switch to that takes longest to actually recompress the package, even though this is some more powerful data center server. As I said, this are only a little bit more because I did not do updates for some days to save them for this video. So when we have all updates, this create error list, new remove will 
schedule packages for builds that are updated in the version control system locally. So while this is running, we can already start the build. This build target builds a whole system in a fresh sandbox environment. We are using this to rebuild the packages that we just scheduled for compilation. So why is this test building? I noticed DD Rescue is using a new compression format, LSAT compression, which is why we did not update to the latest version of that. So DD Rescue 1.22. And this doesn't download because this is now LSAT. By the way, I personally find it a little bit annoying all these special compression formats. In my opinion, they should rather use something more common. The problem with this is that we now teach our build system to support LSAT compression and even package LSAT because we also don't have a package of that. It's right now handled as unknown file extension and raw checksum. Usually we checksum the extracted archive, not to checksum compression artifacts and also as we recompress them to set standard and uh, we certainly want to check some with also compression container variations. So this is... Uh, so then we also need to package LSIP. Creating a new package is actually rather simple as well. Just a new directory. LSIP. Not to start from scratch, you can copy another file like bzip2 or something. Description. Just replace all the information, metadata here. So the download, yeah, download LSIP, compress this LSIP, that is super totally helpful if you don't have LSIP. Zero checksum. We split the file name from the rest of the path as we need the file name separately anyway and sometimes we want to rename files to make them more uniquely named. And version 119, probably stable. GPL we check later. Flex we can delete all for start. Author we also need to check later. Or is it general public license or GPL? That is correct. And the text we just copy here some introduction for the description. Text is a long text that can also be much longer. This is we usually break down to 80 characters. This Headline should be a headline without the name because installer can list it already with a package name like LSIP and the package name should not ideally be repeated there. So then we download this. This is now download in checksum. You can already as fun at this file, archiver, LSIP, and then we can test build it. Actually, we can test build it in a sandbox, not to pollute the system already, reference. Stage 5 is a normal stage where everything is built. LSIP. And if this is a package that compiles with normal configure make, make install cycle, there is nothing more we need to do. We only need to write codes in form of shell script if the standard way to build things does not work with it. Potentially create patch files if something does not work. This warning is there also only from some not yet committed GNU org update. So this just compiled, we can check the file list. This is here in the sandbox build reference with a build ID and then the file list, what it installed. So it installed only LSIP and info and min page. The rest is automatically created maintenance information of the T2 system. If we want to be nice to others, we can immediately add some cache file, which automatically stores the dependencies needed to build it from the same reference, var, administration, cache, LSIP, and that goes to the same archive, LSIP, as cache. And that's all it takes. Okay, we need to still check the author. So that should look quite good. If you create a package, you obviously have to send the patch to the mailing list and can't commit it directly. Actually, for the update of DD Rescue, we need to support to extract this. That is what I really like of T2. What we inherited from Rock Linux is this script-based build system that you can actually read in contrast to some over-complex Python and, and whatsoever. So now we use this as a template to convert. LSIP to 
Actually, these comments are a little bit outdated to use set standard now. This is the only drawback if you use screen on remote shells and you get all the spaces here when you want to copy tabs. What did this install only LSIP? Then it's it's probably LSIP D4 decompress and yeah, Phantom touches on the Microsoft Surface. Don't make the shit up, it really happens. This gzip file is a compressed file that for historic reason is simply named gzip file and compressor is the compressor we are currently using which is set to set standard. And the rest is basically more or less the same. Maybe it could be moved into some common code path though, but sometimes it's not really worth it for this five lines of shell script. And even I only guess here some potentially commonly used extensions. Maybe someone's using tarl set for this, maybe, I don't know, do we have tl set already? It's getting a little bit out of hand with all the compression formats. Okay, let's see if this downloads. I know the tarl set now, it's still source 509. This is some cut and paste issue from the remote shell. We need to zero the checksum also because our scripts did not support it yet. It checksumed the compressed file, which is not what we want. So now, I know it still says unknown file extension that is. Okay, so we probably also need it here. So that is. Uh, by the way, this should match the output of file. I hope it's set. So that was LSAT and tar LSAT. So now it says compressing LSAT file checksum test. That could now be alright. Uh, maybe we also need to add it for. Sometimes the name is a little bit historic because for nearly two decades this was bset 2 We only recently support set standard. We did not yet globally rename this function. It doesn't really matter so much anyway. So tar was it tar LZ. Okay, let's see what this is doing. Now it checksum patched it. There is no checksum. Yes, it looks good. I always suggest to commit things in the order that are needed for things to work. That means if we want to commit the update to DD Rescue, we first should commit this script commit is a little bit subversion commit helper for copyright updating and uh, for package updates, even commit text formatting. I always need to be careful. Sometimes I have uncommitted other changes. Uh, I have here already, as you can see, this is not so Good, because the problem now is that we have here some mixed uh, other changes. Never commit things mixed with other things. So this was in function. I usually do it like this. I manually edit here what I want to keep this. Then this is left of the patch. Then I reverse it simply. Then this is what is left, the changes here of the pattern in the download function and the substitution pattern here in the file name function and the remaining changes for the file type. And this even warns you of excessive white space, which I'm also not the greatest fan of. This is why I already substituted the tabs, but maybe I did not substitute all here. Here are some though. Maybe here, and here it was. Some repeated white spaces here are necessary to keep the uh, temptation. This is, by the way, something many projects don't get so right, this white space cleanliness. This uh, usually annoys me quite a bit. Edit support for a subcompressed compression. And then we apply my local changes back here that I had in testing. Now that we committed the LSIP compression, we can actually commit DD Rescue. 
with a brand new support for LSAP compression. So coming back to those other updates that we're running in the background, at least on the surface side is IDPI display again. That is a drawback of YouTube filming and having the high DPI two times scaling also on your external display. Actually on the surface display there it's a little bit more readable. And um, so now we can go ahead and uh, these are all the successful builds. January 29th, Pearl something. Who is? Babel. Some stuff is old there. And now we can go ahead and use our commit helper to commit all the changes and as you see the copyright is updated, the checksum is patched, also upgraded from an old Unix checksum to a new char 256 or something for latest and greatest security. The commit script is already suggesting a commit message. You can also review what changed there and then say commit and the commit script runs subversion commit in the background. So that's how you easily update thousands of packages over the year each morning a little bit, automatically tracked and yeah, it's already quite automated, but we may even automate it further. I hope you enjoyed the little excursion here to our distribution maintenance and maybe it inspires you to script more things and I think this is why Unix systems are beautiful with all the command line stitching all the processing tools together. This is really in my opinion where this shines and this is also why I joined Rock Linux and continue this T2SD effort because the maintenance of the packages is really such an easy and readable affair. Okay so thanks for watching I hope you learned something and don't forget to subscribe for plenty of more developer videos to come.